you are looking at one of the most ill-conceived race cars of all time. The Aston Martin AMR1 LMP1 race car built to the 2011 LMP1 regulations. Now you may ask, why was it such an ill-conceived car? Well, as the contemporary uh, and leading manufacturers in the LMP1 category at that point, Audi and Peugeot, were going to closed cockpit, low drag race cars as power was being decreased for the 2011 season, Aston Martin said, hey, we've got a coupe, we've got a closed cockpit car, let's open up the cockpit, add a ton of drag to the car, and hitch an unreliable straight six motor uh, to it and uh, see what happens. Well, the end result was, as you can expect, one of the most disastrous race cars of all time. Its competitive life was less than 50 miles in total competition. And at the 24 hours of Le Mans, both cars entered were out by the second lap of the race. One of the greatest embarrassments in motorsports history. An interesting footnote, however, about this car is that the monocoque, the tub, the chassis, was used as the base for the Nissan Delta Wing. Just a little bit of an interesting history lesson. This is one of the most interesting cars of all time and you may be wondering how on earth are we even looking at this and it looks like a video game. What video game is it in? Well it's in Forza Motorsport 4. It was added very very late to the game as DLC and uh, since Forza 4 was one of my favorite games uh, uh, of my teenage years, I figured we'd do a little bit of a tribute to the Aston Martin AMR1, and I'd get an opportunity to show off one of my favorite aspects of Forza Motorsport 4, and that is the custom races. There, are, Yes, there are custom races in this game, and not the way they are implemented in something like Forza 5, Forza 6, Forza 7. You have total control in this game over the classes of cars, and not only that, you can control which specific cars the AI use. So we are going to be doing that today to run a simulation ALMS race uh, and I'm going to be piloting the Aston Martin AMR1. So let's take a look at how this race will be structured and let's get into it. So here we are in the custom race menu. Now this is an online feature unfortunately, so I don't know how much longer the servers are going to be up for Forza Motorsport 4, but at the moment they are still up so you can still do custom races. As you can see, I have laid out most of this already. We're going to do a 24 minute race at Road Atlanta. Uh, my opinion is the greatest road course not only in North America but the world. It's just perfect in every, every respect, but anyway, and it should be in more video games. But as you can see, the class structure and the cars are already pretty much laid out. Uh, we've got LMP1, LMP2, and GT. Now I could I could have also done like a GTC or uh, or LMPC category, but I needed to put another LMP1 category in there and BOP some of the older prototypes like the Oreca 908 and the Aston Lola. Otherwise, they're going to be way faster than my. Um, Leapbox AMR1, or even the very uh, well uh, endowed, I guess that's a, not a right word, but uh, <laughs> the well proportioned R18. But uh, you can also even change the colors that the AI are associated with. So on the mini map, you can tell what car you're about to lap as you're racing in multi class racing. But I mean, it's just so great. So you can change the team, which would put it, uh, w which would change the color. You can have red, blue, green, or yellow, so that you can tell all that stuff. You can also change the uh, player group so you can go from P1, P2 and then the LMP1 BOP class but the best thing about this and the thing that I cannot believe is in more games and certainly why Forza removed this feature is beyond me but maybe they just wanted to add more loot boxes to the game. They want people playing with loot boxes rather than actually doing offline campaign and career stuff. But anyway, you can change the AI car uh, whichever car they race. So we're going to put this poor AI car in another ab abject failure uh, from the 2011 uh, Le Mans series, or I guess this was an ALMS car, was the Panos Abruzzi. And you may be wondering, the Panos Abruzzi, what the heck is that? Well, it's a car that never raced. 
It did one demonstration lap in, uh, in 2010. It entered the 2011 12 Hours of Sebring practice only. I think it caught on fire and it never raced. So, uh, but we're gonna change a little bit of history. Uh, we are gonna stick the old Panos uh, Brucey in, uh, in this race and uh, we'll lap it certainly a few times uh, during the course of this 24 minute race. So without any further ado, let's get on the grid at Road Atlanta and go racing in Forza 4. Here we are, ready to go on the grid at Road Atlanta. Now, an interesting little footnote about this, we have some of the P1 cars starting at the back, I guess they uh, got a penalty or something. And the Audi R18 gets a really good start, as we will lead from the LMPC car, the Green Air Team, Team Gunner car, which I think is in Forza 7. For some reason they brought it back, but anyway, we are racing underway at Road Al Atlanta, almost called it Road America. And I was kind of going slow there, so let's see if we can pick up the pace a little bit. I'm using a controller. I actually have an, an original or an Xbox 360 wheel. I just don't have it at the place I currently am. And let me tell you, I sunk so many hours into this game mode during my high school years. It's kind of cool to come back to it after uh, a kind of extended stay away from Forza 4. I actually lost the disc. I just recently went to GameStop and picked a new disc up so I can actually play this game again. But man, yeah, I, pay, I spent so much time in this game mode as we're going to take a look at the AMR1 driving down the straightaway here. Uh, I actually designed this livery for it. Um, the game actually does not have the uh, official livery for this car. I think Gulf Oil didn't want to be associated with it for obvious reasons anymore. So they just kind of gave it a generic uh, Aston Martin livery. So I kind of designed a Gulf livery. Oh, as we almost get into the back of the R18 here, he's very slow out of the final corner. The AI are very slow out of the final corner here at Road Atlanta. And apparently in the first corner. Let's see if we can drive around the outside of the Ast or the Audi. We're in an Aston and he's gonna cut me off there, so we need to be careful. The AI are not very fast in this game. I used to think they were pretty fast when I was in high school, and then I got Project Cars 2, and then I realized, oh no, the AI are not very fast in this game. And this was so cool to be able to do, to be able to pick your own grids and stuff. I mean, this was before I got R-Factor, or Project Cars, or any of that, where you have a lot more freedom I grew up on Gran Turismo, and as we know, Gran Turismo is one of the most restrictive games in terms of being able to choose exactly what you want to race and when you want to race it. Kind of frustrating from that perspective. But um, this was just such a novel concept. It's like, here's, pick your track, pick the amount of time you want to race the race, and then uh, have at it. And I think we're going to be able to pass the Audi here. Yes, we are. Oh, we made a little bit of contact with him on the way by. So that's not good. But we do go up into the lead. So now I can try to build the gap here before we hit the GT traffic. And, of course, have the Peugeot and the Lola Aston Martin, which are the uh, other two cars in this race, catch up to me. But we are absolutely gapping the R18 right now, which is kind of surprising. Maybe I should have BOP'd this car too. But like I said, Road Atlanta, such an amazing track. It's got the right amount of straights, got the right amount of corners, the right amount of elevation change. It's not too long, it's not too short. Uh, two and a half miles, uh, which is interesting because I like another two and a half mile track in Indiana. Of course, that's a little bit more simple of a layout, but you know, I have—I guess I have a thing for two and a half mile tracks, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But I, I actually got to go here in 2011. Now the AMR1 did not participate, but the R18 did. The Peugeot 908s were there, the Lola Aston Martins, there were two of them, one in the Gulf livery and one in the Muscle Milk. Livery. There were the Lola Mazdas there from Dyson Racing. Oak Racing was there with three Golf Livery Pescarolos. It was an incredible grid. I mean, that's just the prototypes. GT, there were two Jaguars. There was one Ford GT. 
There were t uh, three Corvettes. There were Ferrari 430s, 458 Italias, Porsche 911s of every variety. Whoa, as we get a little bit of a slide going on there, and that's going to allow the R18 to get a little bit closer to me. But um, it was my 18th birthday present um, to go to Petit Le Mans. I asked for it. It was the only thing I asked for for my birthday. Because I had played four as a three, and I just fell in love with this track. Uh, I had first seen this track at the 2008 Petit Le Mans, and that race in and of itself was just a spectacular race with Alan McNish crashing on the warm-up lap in his R10 Audi, uh, and then spending the entire 10 hours making up two laps on the Peugeot 908, and within like the last 30 minutes of the race, made a daring pass in traffic on the back straightaway, and got around the uh, the Peugeot 908 to take the win, and I was just like, that's incredible. I found my new race, uh, a race that, you know, my family always went to the Indianapolis 500, so it was kind of like a genetic love. But Petit Le Mans was kind of the race that I discovered on my own and uh, kind of made my own. So I got to go here with my dad in 2011, and that was uh, an interesting experience, <laughs> to say the least. We had some... Uh, as you do on an adventure, you have uh, the RV broke down that we took. We borrowed an RV from our neighbors, and it broke down on the way there, and I thought I wasn't even going to get there. I had gotten so close. We were like in, uh, had just left, or we're just in the edge of Tennessee, about to go into uh, Georgia, and it broke down. So I missed a day, but uh, we got to spend the qualifying day and the uh, race day at Petit 2011. It was just one of the experiences I'm going to tell my grandkids about, it was just that, you know, and it's like the, one of the best sports car grids ever assembled, especially in the United States. 60 plus cars were entered. I think about 58 started. But it was just, wow, it was incredible. And then later on in life, I went again to Petit Le Mans 2013 to uh, send the ALMS uh, off as that was the last race for that series. And I won tickets from Racer Magazine, and that was just awesome. Another awesome experience, which I actually did myself. I camped out of the back of my Chevy S10. I pitched a tent and uh, lived on granola bars. It was it was just a great experience. I hope to come back to, to Road Atlanta for Petit Le Mans at some point very soon. Hopefully within the next couple of years, maybe even this year, uh, because of the... Uh, the awesome grid that is uh, looking like it's getting assembled in IMSA competition. As we are starting to get a big slide on, we counter-steered way too much coming through the uh, chicane there as we're coming up behind the GT traffic. I don't have any assists on. Um, it's interesting how kind of, I don't want to say dumbed down the physics are versus, you know, something like this versus Project Cars, but my God, after playing Project Cars or even something like Forza 6, this is just... It's so different. It's so much more easy to drive the cars, to get a handle on them and all that stuff, versus something like Project Cars, which is so difficult. And now we are coming up behind the Robertson Racing Ford GT, one of the cars I saw at Petit Le Mans 2011. And then behind the SRT Viper, a car I saw at Petit 2013. And that Viper is getting held up by the... Uh, Oh, as I got a little bit of argy bargy going on there with the uh, Robertson Racing Car, and then I downshifted rather than upshifting, which was a bad idea. As we go around the Viper and down the back straightaway, passing the Abruzzi, maybe. Oh boy, I thought he was going to squeeze me there. Thankfully, he didn't. And into the leading GT cars, which is kind of surprising. We've got the Falcon Tires Porsche up here. We go around him and uh, coming up to the uh, Rocket Sports Racing Jag as we've got the Porsche along the outside. I'm driving very conservatively, by the way. So going around the Rocket Sports car and underneath the West Racing Lamborghini. This is a car that ran one race in ALMS competition, the 2012 or 2011 Sebring 12 Hours, and then never raced again because they ran out of money. That was actually a GT3 spec car that was converted into a GT. LM car or a GTE car or GT2 car, whatever you want to 
could uh, call that class that now currently runs as GTE Pro and GTLM. But then in those days, we just called it IMSA GT. I feel like such an old man sometimes. Forza 4, I do want to talk about a little bit longer because this is kind of the last of the good Forza games. Now, some people have debated me on this and said Forza 6 is, you know, just as good, if not better than this. And I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. Um, this one doesn't have any of the BS that, that Forza 5 and 6 have. The microtransactions are actually in this game. There's a thing called car tokens where you can play, pay real money for the uh, for the cars in the game, but it's not pushed on you. It's an option that's there, and it's an option that I never used because I could grind for credits doing races like this, custom races, and just have fun with the game. Now it's it's all about the loot boxes and selling you stupid female driver avatars and all this crap that you don't need and Tostino's pizza roll uh, avatars, and it's just stupid now. I mean, and they've dumbed down the physics even more. It's it's too online focused. It's not just like, hey, let's have some fun with some cars and put some cool cars in the game, and then you have fun with them. It's like, it's so it's gone so far in the arcade direction where it was here in Forza 4 that it's just, you know, it's, it's unrecognizable from what it used to be. And, and something that really turned me off the Forza franchise was the, was the blatant lies they said during the, uh, or told during the Forza 5 launch. The whole, if you remember in some of the trailers, they, they claimed there were hundreds of cars in the game. They were not very specific on the number, and it turned out they had exactly 200 cars, 201 cars in the game. So they were just barely not liars. And then the DLC season pass that they sold had a bunch of X Forza 4 cars, but they were all like the crappy Forza 4 cars. They were like the Pontiac Trans Am and stuff like that. They've had virtually no race cars in the season pass DLC. And here was another thing they said. They said they rebuilt all the assets in the game from the ground up. That was a lie. The Road Atlanta track, the one we're driving on right now, was a direct port from Forza 4. Like, the track layout was exactly the same. Because if, if they had laser scanned and rebuilt Road Atlanta, there's a chicane, or was a chicane at that time. They've actually since gotten rid of it. Uh, there was a chicane uh, that was in there for the bikes uh, on, the, uh, on the S's over there. So they completely lied throughout the entire Forza 5 process in addition to making it making the game economy so bad and being able to earn so little money that you were almost forced to buy their microtransactions to uh, buy car tokens to get what you wanted in the game. And you couldn't even do anything in free play. You had to buy all the cars with credits. There was like certain very few rental cars you could actually drive in the game and they decided, uh, hey, you know what, let's uh, lock all the content behind a paywall and uh, also charge $60 for it. It was absolutely unacceptable. I did end up getting Forza 6 eventually, and I've played that from time to time. I did a few videos on this channel on it. But at that point, uh, Forza as a franchise kind of lost me. And it was amazing because Forza 3 kind of drew me in and actually got me away from Gran Turismo because of their focus on modern race cars and North American racing. They had all the cars from the 2008 and 2009 American Le Mans series, and all those cars are in this game as well. Uh, and they also had tracks like Sebring, Road America, Road Atlanta. Tracks that um, were just ignored by Polyphony Digital over at Gr in the Gran Turismo uh, scheme of things. So it was just, um, it was just really a shame that uh, Turn 10 and Forza had... They pretty much had the market cornered for just a couple years on the racing games because of course Gran Turismo we could talk for years about how badly they screwed everything up and they've also made the mistake of going all online with their stuff and they've actually walked it back recently by uh, by making it so that uh, they ha there's a career mode in Gran Turismo now they're adding it in as a patch 
But they must have realized how bad they screwed everything up by just going, trying to create Gran Turismo iRacing. And now Forza is, whoa! As we lose control of the car there, coming through the hairpin, that was fun. And now Forza is like a, a free-to-play mobile game, and free-to-play mobile games are like literal cancer. They are terrible. I think I played Angry Birds Star Wars for about five seconds, and that was the only mobile game I've ever played. Aside from that, I couldn't be bothered with any mobile game. They're just stupid, and they're money pits, and they're, you know, pretty much gambling, as we found out with Star Wars Battlefront as well. That's kind of what's kind of tipped everybody off, and I'm like, did you guys not forget the entire launch of the Xbox One console? Game developers have been doing this for like four years now. It's ridiculous, but it's the way of the world now. This is such a beautiful track. I love Road Atlanta. And of course, you guys are probably screaming at the screen as well. This game is horribly unrealistic because your AMR1 has not broken down at the side of the road yet. And to that I will say, yes, you're absolutely right. I should not have been able to drive this car for as long as I have been able to drive it. Because otherwise, um, yeah, it should have broken. So we go down a gear, uh, down a second, and accelerate off the corner. We're actually catching an LMP2 car. If you'll notice on the screen, we've got the blue dot there indicating a P2 car. Nowhere to be seen are the is the R18 nor the Peugeot 908 that's in this race, or the Lola Aston Martin. Perhaps I should have inverted the field instead of have the uh, fast classes start at the front as we almost spin the car out there as well. But I will say this, you know, Forza 4 isn't perfect. There were some things that really bothered me about it, namely the fact that I love to do endurance racing. As you can tell, I'm doing a 24 minute race, which obviously isn't that long in the grand scheme of things. But you couldn't set fuel or tire wear so that pit stops would actually become a, an actual factor in the race. The fuel and tires in this game last such an ungodly long amount of time that it's almost impossible to run the car out of fuel in the first place. So you have to run like two and a half hours to get the, get the car to run out of fuel, which is just so unbelievably unrealistic. An LMP1 fuel tank lasts about uh, 45 minutes in real life. And that is simply not the case. As we go around the uh, the number 99 car, and I guess I made this a public race because somebody just joined it. Well, whoever that guy is, he just got famous. So we go down to second gear for the chicane. Coming up behind the Panos Abruzzi. behind C. Reed, I guess. I don't know why I put the name uh, the names up on the... Uh... Oh, can't explain left. Rip him. Well, I can't explain why well, I can't explain. He came in and left. But anyway, we passed the Abruzzi, and it was the side-by-side uh, -side of Fail there, and also the side-by-side -side of Fail as we passed the uh, Lambo and the uh, Jag. It's funny, the only real legitimate... Uh, well, aside from the Robertson 4 GT, that was a pretty legitimate car as well. They actually had quite a bit of success with that car, even though they never actually had a race win. They had some pole positions and a podium at uh, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. But anyway, the uh, the Porsche Falcon Tires car is leading uh, by a big, big margin in GT as I kill a cone there. Rip cone. And it's interesting because the last time I was at Petit Le Mans, the Falcon Tires Car 1 in a Forza Motorsport livery. Somebody designed uh, the livery in Forza and uh, the car won the race. Kind of interesting. Just an interesting footnote as we get way out wide there underneath the bridge. And here comes the Falcon Tires Car, but uh, we're going to pull away from him. I wonder in the next five minutes if we'll catch that LMP2 car, the Level 5 Motorsports Lola here. It's going to be close. We'll see. We're not going to lap any LMP1 cars. If this was a longer race, we probably would. But it's not looking like we will. 
in this race. I love the S's at Road Atlanta. It's such a great corner, especially the one at the very bottom of the hill. As you go over that lip there that was causing so much trouble in the most recent edition of the Petit Le Mans, where two cars went launching over that uh, curb there and actually almost flew into a spectator area. They were very lucky that uh, there wasn't actually a uh, really, truly bad airborne crash over there. As we go underneath the Audi bridge, that was never an Audi bridge when I was there. The last two times I was there was a Mazda bridge because at the time Petit Le Mans was called the Petit Le Mans presented by Mazda. And now it's like the Petit Le Mans presented by like Motul or something like that. Again, I haven't been back in four years, so you'll have to forgive me. As we come around the final corner, three and a half minutes to go, or the nearness makes no difference, three and a half minutes to go. But yeah, can they add Road Atlanta to Project Cars for the love of God? It's like a neglected track, and there's still no way to play Road Atlanta really with day and night change. Uh, there is a track in R Factor 1 that has day and night change, but it was only recently released. Oh, as we try to kill ourselves there. Um, yeah, it was only recently released, like within the last year and a half for R Factor 1, and at that point I wasn't really playing R Factor 1 all that much anymore. So it was kind of disappointing. So yeah, I'd love a, an actual Petit Le Mans simulator one of these days to come down the pipeline. I do like this livery though. Again, like I said in the opening, I tried to design the car, you know, as a golf livery, but something that was different than your generic just powder blue and uh, and orange. Because it always feels like uh, that's the way the, um, the golf liveries always are. And I wanted to do something a little different. And I just kind of like a pie in the sky, like what if this car had actually been successful? It obviously wasn't, but it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be successful in this race anyway. There's still time for that straight six motor to go pop. But we are going to catch this level five Honda. We probably will not catch the back of the GT field again in the next two minutes. Because that's about two laps from now and the furthest most back GT car is on the back straightaway. And we're not even into the hairpin yet. So we catch the... Uh, curbing there down into second gear just catching the curbing once again in fact you know who this is driving this car the AI anyway is Dan Greenewalt the um, the guy who uh, actually uh, produces or owns turn 10 studios so um, I feel like I should wreck him for the microtransactions that he ruined Forza with yeah I'll turn your car lover into a gamer Dan Oh, by the way, I also got banned from the I got banned from the Forza Five, uh, uh, the Forza Motorsport forums for speaking too much truth about um, too much truth to power back in 2013. They banned me from the forums. It's the only forum, I, as far as I'm aware of, that I've been banned from. But I was mad. I was like, "This is stupid. Can we just do custom races? Can you get this microtransaction crap out of here?" And they were like, oh, no, you said bad things about, you threatened the devs or something. And I'm like, I didn't threaten anybody, but it was too late. They banned me until 2,999. So, yeah, I, I can't go on the Forza Motorsport 4 uh, servers for a while. Or the Forza Motorsport 4 forums for a while. I'm not allowed there anymore. So do you think we're going to get one more lap in, or is the race going to end before we get back there? We've got 30 seconds to make it. It's going to be close. Are we going to get an extra lap in? It's going to come down to the wire. I think we're going to get an extra lap in. We come through the final corner. Yep, with eight seconds remaining, we're going to get one more lap. And I think we are going to lap some more GT cars. So that's going to be fun. Oh, nope, never mind, the race just ended. I forgot, that's how this works. <laughs> the, uh, the race will just end. So there's the results. I'm going to save the replay so we can watch it later uh, and uh, finish the video on it.
So that was Forza Motorsport 4. Uh, this was fun. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see anything else from this game. I know there's a few uh, interesting car track combinations that you can do in this game. Uh, I might even make it a stream, a live stream one of these days. Do, you, do any of you guys still have Forza 4? I suppose we could do uh, like some online racing, get some uh, maybe some full lobbies going. Uh, I don't know. It's a possibility. Let me know down in the comments. But this was a fun video to make. It uh, was very nostalgic. I got to rant about microtransactions, which is the trend nowadays. Uh, it was just an all-around good video. So thank you guys so much for watching me drive and win in the worst race car of all time. Actually, that's another question down in the comments. Let me know what the worst race car of all time is in your opinion. That will be an interesting discussion. So until next time, guys, we'll see ya in the next video.